Welcome to the podcast that explores mysterious disappearances, bizarre worldly occurrences, strange phenomenon, and basically everything that's weird. Welcome to the podcast, Everything That's Weird. I am Anthony, and I'm here with Brandon, and we are your host. And tonight, we are talking about Area 52. Yeah, Area 51's Dirty Little Sister. <laughs> also known as the Dugway Proving Grounds. Mm-hmm. So, I started doing a lot of research on this, and there's actually a ton of it. There's a ton of it. Yeah. Usually, usually we're like, uh, there's not a whole lot on this, and we had to do like deep dives, but not really. This one, um, there's actually a lot of facts on this, but I think it's probably because this was developed in 1942. Yeah. And it is a base, and its main. Its main use is for biological and chemical rep- weapons testing. Yeah, and and aviation testing. Maybe. And aviation yeah. testing, true. Um, there's a lot of weird things attached to this. Mm-hmm. So early on, okay. So first of all, the Geneva Convention they outlawed chemical weapons. And biological weapons mm-hmm. from World War One. That's why when you see old pictures of World War One, there's people in gas masks. Um, and then World War Two, they're they're not, is because you weren't allowed to use that in war. Which I find that really funny. Yeah. I've, like, I, 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 I <laughs> like, they didn't like, say don't the use rules. the guns either. Right. Right. <laughs> like or or the atomic bomb. But yeah, this is all fist fights, guys. Come on. <laughs> it's kind of like that part in Anchorman where they're like, you know, they're like, the rules are there are no rules except <laughs> for no no punching in the face and no messing up of the hair. And everybody's like, well, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. Duh. Or for news people. <laughs> or, or classy. Come on. Man. Um, but yeah, there is. There's actually concrete evidence that they had done some kind of chemical testing in the 60s. And that is because of the, it's known as the Dugway Sheep Incident. Mm. So in 1968, um, they were testing this nerve agent. And it's called VX. So I don't know if that's... I mean, that wouldn't be 15. Because 15 would be XV, right? Um, XV, yeah. But VX is so deadly. It's so deadly that you are only allowed to produce... A hundred milliliters a year as a country. (laughs) Another weird rule. (laughs) Another weird rule, right. And a pinhead size, if somebody stuck you with a pin soaked in VX, VX, it would kill you. (laughs) So they put it in a plane, took the plane up, and they were trying to figure out how to disperse it in a combat situation. And when they did, they didn't account for winds and the shifting. <laughs> yeah. And what happened was it came down on all these sheep and killed the sheep. So it also got into like the water supply and whatever. So. Uh, this farmer, he went out to like check on his sheep, and when he went out there, 
you know, he gets like a big drink of water out of the stream. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, that's weird. I don't see any of the sheep. So he kind of, you know, goes out looking for him. And then he finds like the first dead body. And then he proceeded to find, and I never got like an exact count, but it was a lot. It was a lot. It was like 400 or 500 sheep, I think. Mm-hmm. And I, I could be wrong on that. I think, it was, I think it was like his entire flock, right? Yeah, every, every, every one of them died. So, the point of that is, they're testing some high-end chemical weapon shit out there. Yeah. It's, it's some stuff that really, really um, can take a population out. Yeah. So, there's also um, some ties to like Area 51... Where, like, they said, you know, Area 51 kind of got exposed. And they sort of pushed projects like Bob Lazar's. Yeah. Reverse engineering projects to Area 52 because they have a ton of these dumbs or deep underground military bases. So, okay, and to back this up, I was watching a documentary, and it was called Looney Tunes Back in Action, <laughs> starring Brendan Fraser. Okay. And in the movie, Bugs Bunny wrecks his spy car, flying spy car, in the Nevada desert, and ends up in Area 52. Really? Which is secretly a cover up for, but the Area 51 is really the cover up for Area 52. And that he, there he frees Marvin the Martian along with Marvin the Martian's other alien buddies and they escape Area 52. Really? Yes. I've never seen that. <laughs> it is a documentary. That's. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea Brendan Fraser was in the documentary making. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looney Tunes documentaries. Well, Bugs Bunny, of course. Right, Bugs Bunny was the star, you know, the real. By star. the by, the way, Bugs Bunny is a thousand times cooler than Mickey Mouse, right? Yeah. Like Mickey Mouse is like, oh, Mickey, but yeah. Bugs Bunny will like fuck with you. Yeah. Like, he'll put you in a barber chair and shave your beard. Yeah. To classical music. Right. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, you know, well, it's funny because in the movie, he's such an asshole to Daffy Duck that Daffy Duck wants to get his own show <laughs> away from Bugs Bunny because he keeps <laughs> fucking with him. <laughs> One of, one of the best Bugs Bunny, and they're like early on, the early Bugs Bunny, is when he's like, I'm never mixing radish juice and carrot juice again. <laughs> and, and he's shaving his beard, and he pulls his tongue out. It's got hair on it, and he shaves his tongue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That makes me laugh. So anyway, the Area 52 also did a lot of... Um, secret test um, where they <laughs> this is funny they acquired a bunch of MIGs from Russia <laughs> right well they had a defector right right they they had a lot of MIGs so what I heard is that they got a MIG in this one jet fire I, I say I heard I read this this is online I don't I don't know the exact article but they had a defector um, that landed a MIG somewhere in the United States and they, they whisk it off into the desert. And then he said um, he could get his buddies. But however it happened, mm-hmm. they, they ended up, you're right, they have like a fleet of MIGs. Yeah, they had a bunch of different models, different makes. It was so that they could, the Russian MIG is what they were the fighter jets from the Russians because we were um, they they ran so many sorties they ran thousands of them there was like 
I, I think they said something like when it was all said and done when the whole program ran because it ran through most of the 80s um the operation was called constant peg oh, he's coming up god with damn names. it <laughs> why why I don't, I don't know what i don't know what the hell that is but <laughs> it was it, it was run by a colonel gail peck so i don't know um <laughs> But they, but he, apparently he did a great job because nobody knew about it, right? Then and, and they, they, I'm just saying, almost a decade they did this program and not one leak, and they didn't. They di- disclosed it. I think uh, it was several years, 19 years after the program ended. Huh. Where they they actually disclosed it, and there was zero leaks to that point about this program where they had acquired a bunch of Russian MiGs and they were having American pilots dogfight American uh, fighter jets. So if you're a fan of shirtless male volleyball Mm -hmm. and you like jet fighting, then Top Top Gun is the movie for you. But they sort of explained that in the beginning of Top Gun. Right. That they were getting outmatched by the MiG because the MiG was like a superior aircraft. Yeah. And their their fighters were better than ours, um, you know, through Vietnam and whatever. And it was and probably then, their constant peg. <laughs> 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 probably, right? So that was that was the whole basis of Top Gun. Yeah, they even had up. There's a camp just north of it. And this is this is fun. If any if, to people that are listening, when you if you, if you're listening at work or in your car or whatever, when you get home, go and get on Google Earth and look up Tonopa T O N O P A H Test Range Airport. That's the area we're talking about. And if you go there, you can look around on the facility, and we're going to talk about certain points in the facility and stuff, and you can go look for yourself because there's some really odd stuff there. But if you go just north of the airport, there's this where it looks like a kind of like a little town, and that's exactly what it is. It's all kinds of housing facilities. They got tennis courts. They got they have a high school. Yeah, they got a high school. They got and a, they're they're the Mustangs. And they, <laughs> not, not, the no, this is the this is right off the base. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, this is right above the base. There's there's this little, it's got all kinds of dorms to live in. They got softball fields. They have an, uh, supposedly they got an indoor pool, Olympic size indoor pool, two wow. softball fields, tennis, four tennis courts. They got food courts. They even have like ATMs and they, uh, but it's called man camp. It's called what? Man camp. What does that mean? I don't know. I I don't know. This 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 is this is I sound less like a military base, and more like a <laughs> gay porn studio. <laughs> I'm gonna get pegged at man camp, right? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm gonna go into the into the middle of the desert, right? In an area the size of Rhode Island to man camp. <laughs> Right. So this yeah. base is huge, though, right? It's it's, it's monstrous, yeah. And they, I think they, and it depends on where you look. Some people, but, but I, I I found the range to be somewhere between five and six hundred square miles. Right. So it's it's big. Yeah, but, I forget. <laughs> yeah, but, go ahead. but but it is it is the size of Rhode Island, correct? Yeah, it's it's big. It's big. Um, There's nothing there. I mean. There's a whole lot of nothingness, but yeah, the area so itself is huge. This is kind of like the, uh, this is kind of like the Nevada Triangle area. Yeah, this is only 70 miles northwest of Area 51, and it's like right out of Salt Lake City, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a huge area, and and Nevada notoriously has. Tons of ghost towns, probably more than any state. I don't know if that's a fact. It's you're probably right. It does but like, a lot. there's a lot of there was a lot of silver mining, mm-hmm. and then the, that like the market kind of tanked, and it wasn't worth it to do it. Um, 
but there's a lot of sites in Nevada um, that are just like, you know, empty. And that whole area is kind of like the Bureau of Land Management. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they kind of just eat land, you know, and they kind of push the public farther and farther back. So, yeah, I mean, if you're going to test any kind of aircraft, that's that's where you do it. But there's all well, kinds of weird claims. Like, here's, here's the thing, though. Like, if you go up to uh, Tonopah, the town of Tonopah, those people won't tell you shit. Yeah. They're tight-lipped as shit. They're like, yeah, we see stuff, but we don't talk about it. <laughs> okay, but like, but we grew up next to... Um, we grew up in a town like the Simpsons, <laughs> <laughs> but like our, the people we knew, they didn't say shit. Yeah. They really didn't. Yeah. Well, they, I mean, think people about this were, though. Like they were seeing, um, the F-17 still, they're stealth fighters. They were kind right. of like a bat, you right. know? So you're seeing these giant bats flying through the air in the desert and they're like, yeah. I'm not gonna say anything, right? <laughs> not even gonna mention it, you know. And still, to like this day, like you go in and people ask questions because there's people that work at the facility, and they won't say nothing. And that's crazy, but I, I get it. Mm -hmm. Like you know, you start talking shit, and then you're closed down. You're out of a job. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. And that was kind of like what, what I was just talking about. Like where we grew up, there was a uranium processing plant, and if you go through the museum. There's all these like propaganda signs that say, you know, it, they don't say this exactly, but it's it's basically loose lips sink ships. It's kind of, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. shut up. We're trying to build atomic weapons here. Right. <laughs> but now, what I found interesting about the facility, because if you look, if you look on Google Earth and they're I'm on they, it right now, they have their own little salt flat there. Right. And if you look in the middle of it, the oddest thing, right? This uh, this ring in the middle, and below it is this diamond, and below that's another ring. It's very odd. Where are you here? On that salt flat that's yeah, just to I'm the looking, north. I'm looking at that. Not the one, not the one to the to the west. The one just, to the north. Yeah, just northeast slightly of the airport. There's a small one, and it's got a ring in the center. So this and a, and a diamond it looks like almost like a pyramid. So this kind of brings us to like the next point, which is that a lot of people think this is like um, LAX for aliens. Right. It looks it looks like almost like a crop circle. You know what it made me think of? Did you ever see the movie Explorers? Yes. Okay, remember in the beginning, Ethan Hawke was having dreams. Right, he kept seeing this. It kind of, kind of made me think of that, like it's one of those symbols, like that he was seeing in his dreams. <laughs> like if we can figure this out, we can make one of these impenetrable uh, right. force fields. <laughs> but like that, a lot of people think this is just like a place for, and I say a lot of people, but John Lear. And yes. then Dr. Stephen Greer mm -hmm. are two people that have some sort of credibility mm -hmm. um, that fully believe that this is because this is f an alien airport. Yeah, and and John Lear is the as the name sounds, he's he's the son of the man Lear, who Lear Jet. Vent the Lear Jet. So and, and he, he's, he, so he's, he's a decorated kind of, pilot. He's also tied in with Bob Lazar. He is. And, and he's got, he's a former CIA pilot. Right. And he claims that a uh, concrete truck driver told yeah. him. Right. I was just going to get to that. Go ahead. That, that they used a, what he, what he said was they used a clean nuclear device to blow a hole in the Nevada desert 
And then this concrete truck driver told him that it would take about four hours for him to drive down to the bottom of this hole to pour his concrete for what they were building underground. And then he would drive back out. And Which he said they could, yeah, could not, hold 25,000 people. Yeah, he said they were building a facility that he believes could hold 25,000 people. And now, mysteriously, the guy that he talked to disappeared after he told him the story. Why do they always disappear? They disappear, man. When you talk, loose lips. Loose lips sink ships, yeah. right? So, besides, like, even, I know that's weird. Mm-hmm. By the way, if you're on Google Earth and you go to Dugway Proving Grounds and you zoom in, uh, Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints, right? Right? <laughs> to the northeast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, right to the northeast. Right. So if you have to go to church, do they call it church? Mm, no, okay. No. All right. I think, well, whatever. If I you have so. to go to church or Temple is Jewish, but yeah, if you have to go church, to church, church of Jesus Christ and Latter-day right. Saints. All right. If you have to go and you are Mormon, mm-hmm. you have a place to go. Mm-hmm. But uh, so weird things that people report is that um, back to Space Force, they have like a Space Force entrance. Did you mm-hmm. hear this? The zipper? The zipper, yeah, where the the ground seems to separate like a zipper, and plays, a, yeah, reveals a hidden uh, landing strip, right? Which I hope that's true. So do I. Oh, see, I always thought like, why wouldn't these some of these facilities be doing that? Like, because you can see them from satellite, even if they hide some stuff, and and like. I always picture in my head like these, like radar poles, and they're positioned in, uh, you know, in a perimeter, and then they project to satellites and a false image. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But like, you're, but you're he's right. saying the ground opened up, like the the ground literally zippered open and revealed a hidden runway, and then would close back up. So okay, so. There is a Dugway Proving Grounds, and this is what we were talking about. There is a Dugway Proving Grounds high school. Hmm. And they... Okay. They're part of the... I'm going to screw this up. 2L school district. And they are the Mustangs. So this is like... It seems like there's two sets of people working on the Dugway Proving Grounds, right? You have, like, scientists and mathematicians and, um, you know, researchers. Mm -hmm. And then you have, like, Bob Lazar types. You have people that are much more underground. (laughs) Like, they have secret access to, like, the zipper <laughs> and, <laughs> and the underground facility. So there's, like, kind of like there's this public persona that the base has, but then there's also this, like, deep state, like, in the same area. And it's far away because it's the size of Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. But, like, farther away, there's, like, this deep state that kind of operates there, too. Um. All right, let's let's talk about a few facts. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. Second, there are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Mm 
When people ask you, what do you do for a living? Do you want to be able to tell them, I'm a producer? Well, now you can. Go to patreon.com, search everything that's weird, and sign up. We'll list you in all the show notes and mention you in every episode. Go to patreon.com to get started today. My first thought is why are you testing something? Okay. I get it that you have to test chemical weapons. Yeah. I I get it. In case... And and even this is stupid. Like, are you using (coughs) chemical weapons when... You have atomic weapons, but whatever. That's a whole. That's a whole other argument. But okay, you're just being a dick at this point. Yeah, right. Like you already (laughs) have nuclear weapons. You had to give them the sniffles too. (laughs) Right. But like, why would you test something like that? It seems like the margin of error is crazy, right? right? Yeah. There's so many factors: groundwater, wind. Right, and. It was, by all accounts, a failure. Like, you know, and they actually had to pay out because um, it wasn't just like one farmer. They they actually paid out. They they put a block of money on it and said it's a million dollars. Figure it out. And they gave it to like these farmers that made claims that like so they never admitted, yeah, that they did it. They never admitted what it was, but they did compensate the farmers for this loss because it was a huge loss. Right. So, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, and I've never been a farmer, but I could imagine, like, if that was your livelihood and, you know, um, yeah, and then all of a sudden it's gone. Every yeah, bit you, of it. Yeah. Every bit of it. You need to have some kind of compensation for that. Right. And then, um, and there was another incident where a contractor apparently had dumped um there's a de-icing agent that he had dumped like gly like glyphosate. Yeah, some it was urea maybe. Okay. I don't and, know what urea is. And he dumped like a thousand pounds of it and it killed like eighty eight horses or something like that. Jeez. It's gotten into groundwater. And, but that was like an independent contractor that was working in, in or around the facility, I believe. So, and they, I think the fine for that was like 15 grand. I was like, dang, you didn't even slap him. <laughs> <laughs> you, right. You didn't even slap him. <laughs> so, the, okay, the underground bases have so a lot of people think that aliens there's like several kinds of aliens Mm -hmm. at least like 70 I think right that's what I heard okay that we know of right there's like 70 species and whether or not you agree with this whatever it doesn't matter right we're just just for for conversation's sake there's Mm -hmm. a bunch of different but some of them have adapted to a hot climate and some of them have adapted to cold climate mm-hmm. cold climate they live in the polar regions and underground mm-hmm. and this new like release of information from the government is to say that well we know about them and some people think we've known about them they've always been here mm. but they don't function well on the surface the ones that are like dangerous mm. so Eisenhower when we talked about this on the Area 51 again this is all <laughs> this is all written by people that secondhand accounts yeah. but apparently he sent advisors to go 
meet people in or meet aliens at Area 51 because he had tried to get in. They said, you don't have clearance. He said, we'll invade you. I'll use the army to invade you, right? Right. So they're like, fine, send an advisor. Come with you. So he sends an advisor. They go to check it out. When they check it out, apparently, he draws up this treaty. And this goes back to like the Majestic 12. Mm-hmm. And Bob Lazar having Majestic clearance. So the Majestic 12 was uh, a group of people that were like high end scientists, um, military people, things like that. So they made this treaty and in the treaty in exchange for technology we were supposed to be offered um, technology Mm -hmm. in exchange for biological material. That biological material was us. And in the treaty they were not allowed to they were allowed to do tests on us, but we were not to be killed in the process. And it was for short periods of time. And a lot of people think that that's why the whole abduction thing kind of took off right sort of after his presidency. Like people really yeah. weren't getting abducted before then. Mm-hmm. And then after that, they were. Right. <laughs> it's being whored it, out. It's whored out. For the man. <laughs> and a lot of them say because aliens live longer than we do. And they want to study us for like generations, not just like one person. Starting like to this. feel that constant pig moniker now, I think. Right. I'm starting to understand it. <laughs> it's South Park, dude. Constant probe was a little too on the nose. <laughs> Cartman's got a probe in his ass. <laughs> Come on, guys. Shut up, guys. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's hard to say what... Um, hold on, let me get into it. It's hard to say, like, what exactly the goal is but it is bizarre that there's this giant base the size of one of our US states that has you know secret military testing they have they're doing high end um, you know aviation testing they're doing um, they developed a lot of planes there now there was a there was a um, diner owner in uh Tanopa that has two children that work at the facility and he says he doesn't ask them about what they do there you know he's like I don't want to know I don't want to know but they did tell him a while back one of the projects that they were working on they're not working on anymore was to develop a plane that could take off from the ground fly into space and come back down that's awesome and then later on the um, government declassified some photos of some of those um, test planes and stuff and they, they, they got some real odd looks to them man they could easily be something that you would think you know that's I've never seen a plane like that that's a UFO well you would have to work with that because I mean the G-force alone is hard you would you, it'd be hard to get a pilot yeah um, so you know like and you, you said it with the Bob Lazar thing. Maybe it's just technology that, you know, they came across, mm-hmm. they worked it out, and then, you know, never really mastered it. Well, and the thing happens. is, too, it kind of makes you wonder if Area 51 isn't a setup. The, the prelim and the Area 52 is the finish off, you know, it, where they're, they're discovering the stuff and then classified how they got it, where it came from. As far as Area 52 knows, all this stuff is uh, ground level stuff that's, um, you know, earthbound tech. And really it came from somewhere else and they're feeding them the tech and they're going, okay, we'll work with that. And then they're testing these things. 
because the company that was the Sandia National uh, Laboratories right. is a subsidiary of Lockheed Martin, which we talked about in Area 51, right. that they were running a lot of most of this stuff there. So it kind of stands the reason that if we were proposing that Area 51 had alien tech and how compartmentalized Bob Lazar alluded to that S4 and Area 51 being that Area 52, as open as it is comparably to Area 51, would get this tech, not know that it wasn't otherworldly, and work off the blueprints off of stuff that was derived from alien tech. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, everything is so compartmentalized, mm-hmm. and yeah, like say that guy has a heart attack, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, and then he has maybe one or two guys under him, and they're on a need to know basis, right? Mm-hmm. And then maybe one of those guys dies, and that that checks about, you know, it's I could see something like that happening. Yeah, where they're just and, and like all the testing that they're doing and all the advancements they're making are really coming from what's trickling down from Area Fifty One. And you said it in Area Fifty One that like if there was some kind of tech, like an underground magnet train that goes like, you know, four hundred four hundred miles an hour, right? Yeah, supposedly it goes through Area Fifty Two and into Vegas. Right. That like people would want that. Yeah. And they're routinely getting. Um, the like seismographs routinely go off like there's explosions, but yeah. there's no explosion, right? But the, to be fair, um, uh, uh, Tanopa air uh, test range, they that's what they do, they fire off thousands of missiles and bombs, and they they test drop. Uh, deactivated nukes and 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 stuff like that with parachutes on them to test their um, targeting capabilities. If you look at that lake bed that I was talking about on Google Earth, that right above it, it does that look like a target drawn? In I'm still I'm still there? trying to I'm still trying to find that. It's just up from like if you're looking at the um, the runway, the Tanopa Test Range Airport. Okay. And you go just up, just up north, just a little bit up to the right. There's a small um, salt flat or a dry lake bed. Okay, so. Do you have your stuff pointing north? um, So just when you said that, right? Yeah. So I was on Dugway. Um, proving grounds, which is a lot farther northwest. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! It's, it's like it, it, like it pulled up. I see what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, what is that? You're right. And then what is? Is that a? Is that a pyramid? No. <laughs> what is that? Right. I mean, it looks like a pyramid. Right? And then look, <laughs> look, look right above the the lake bed. There's is that a target? J- just the north um, west top corner of the lake bed. It's off the lake bed. Hmm. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> And then you got all these sites. Yeah, and there's just random roads that if you follow them, they just go on and on and on, and then they'll come to this like little outbuilding somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. Little, little outbuildings everywhere. And then if you see, they're all in between ranges, and then there are agricultures. Why are there agricultures? Yeah, I saw the agriculture. Maybe for too. maybe for like testing, probably it's for the man camp. <laughs> <laughs> Have well, corn. Where's all the men who get their bread? That's interesting. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah so, so, like, you should look at that if you're listening. Mm-hmm. 
definitely go on when you when you get to your computer go on google earth and and like i said punch in tonopa test range airport that'll take you straight to the airport and then just up to the north um east is that that lake bed and you'll see some some odd stuff just some odd symbology in there and then here's an interesting thing that got brought up on an uh when I was doing my research, somebody was showing this photo and that apparently this caused a big stink. And I actually found it in the satellite image. There is, if you go to the airport and you're looking at the runways and there's the um, <clears throat> cross streets that go across the runway. Yeah. The one in the middle that has like the, ta- the little pull off there. Uh-huh. If you if you go to the right and look at that hangar, there's a blurred image of a of something coming out of that hangar. You see, it's kind of like a bluish blob thing sticking yeah, out. Of here. I do that. That right there set the internet on fire. Apparently, at some point, because the um, they said that because it's it's clearly blurred when everything else is a lot clearer around it. So it would have had to been Google that went in there and blurred it. Now, the other thing that they recognize is that this area hasn't, this area hasn't been, um, uh, Google, they said something like Google refreshes their images every 30 days or something. Right. This one hasn't been done in eight years or something like that. Yeah. So, and, I mean, they, that and car, they intentionally went in there and blurred that out. That car can't just drive around in there. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but even but like, the aerial one has not been changed in a long time. But like Rachel Nevada's right there. Yeah. So I've also heard like cross things where people have been given interviews and they say that S4 is actually in Area 52. Have you heard that? Well, they were saying that there were several S4 sites, and one right. of them is in Area 52. And the one and the one guy said that Bob Lazar actually worked in Area 52, not. And I don't know. He actually never said he worked in Area 51. No, but he, he the said way he, he described him getting there didn't seem like you'd have but to like, go. But Rachel there. Rachel Nevada is like. From okay, from the test airport, Rachel yeah. Nevada is northeast. Yeah, yeah, I know where it's at. Okay, so like, so just due north. Oh wait, is it due west? Is Area Fifty One? Area Fifty One is due west, but it runs from there to Salt Lake City. So like, he, I know he said he went 15 miles into the desert, and it's that—that's what Bob Lazar said. Um, but it kind of puts him by what Bob Lazar said and what people are saying. It—he's technically in this other area, this area 52. Well. According to like what I looked up, or because if you go, if you back out, what it is is that if you go, Rachel Nevada is right. is slightly southeast of it's east, but slightly south of of Area Fifty Two. Okay, it's about right. 70, 65 miles east, directly south of Rachel is Area Fifty One. 70 miles away from area 52 now s4 is believed to be right behind the papoose mountain range right which would be even further south of okay area 51. so it's north it's north so he wouldn't have been that now they said they had a janet flight though that does go into area 52 which was the flight that we talked about that was the special secret airline that goes into area 51 
that so one of the bes- flights goes into Area 52. So besides experimental aircraft, besides aliens, besides alien aircraft, people have also reported they've seen government caravans. Yeah. Like black suburbans. Yes. Where they're just driving and they disappear. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy too, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's, so it makes you wonder like if they have a Bond movie thing, right? Right. Like... So I don't believe in Chris Angel. Who's the <laughs> other one? Uh, um, the... Wow, well, I don't know. He caught me off guard. Um, <laughs> David Blaine. <laughs> David Blaine. <laughs> There's a really funny YouTube video where these guys are like. The David Blaine comes up to him. He's like, "You want to see some street magic?" They're like, "No, we don't." David, it's like two, two gay dudes that were out shopping. <laughs> They're like, "No, we don't." David Blaine. He's like, "You sure? What were you doing today?" They're like, "We were shopping." He's like, "What were you shopping for?" No, I don't know. I got a green sweater, and then all of a sudden they like he like does that look into the camera. Yeah, and and then they flash over the guy, and the guy's got the green sweater on. He's like, "What the hell?" <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "What are you drinking there?" He's like, "It's orange soda." Okay, what? Well, it's it's orange soda. I bought it at the store at Seven Eleven. It's orange soda. Well, like, well, He's like, "What else is orange?" He's like, "I don't, I don't know, Cheez Its." He's like, "Take a drink of your orange soda." <laughs> <laughs> he like. He like, takes a drink and there's like nothing there and he opens it and he's like, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't believe in the right. dark arts. Right. <laughs> however, however, I did see David Copperfield hide the Statue of Liberty. So <laughs> right. maybe there's something like very simple. A very simple explanation because like you know even in World War II they used um, in some of our factories they would cover them in this um, it was like this camouflage and if you ever watch MASH yeah at the beginning of MASH I, they're watched, run- <laughs> I fell asleep to that show every night when I was young uh, me too I love MASH MASH is hysterical yeah. but they're running up they're going to a helicopter to get like some wounded soldiers mm-hmm. and when they run past it's it's almost like that orange fencing that they have for like softball tournaments or whatever yeah except it's camouflage you ever seen that yeah yeah okay well in world war ii they came up with something very similar and it looked like topography so if you're flying overhead yeah it just looked like ground yeah but in actuality, it was like a ten. Yeah, and um, Cheech and Chong's nice dreams. <laughs> of course, they were, they, were, they were growing <laughs> weed in the pool, and they had, a, they had a big tarp that was painted to look like a pool. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's something like that. Maybe it's a sleight of hand. Yeah, maybe that. That's um. But why? Why do it? You know. Well, because you have I aliens. Don't, I don't imprisoned doubt... underground. No, they're not in prison. They're running us. Um, I don't believe. Okay. You have to understand that they know that everybody's watching them all the time, right? Yeah. So, like, okay. If you're trying and they don't to really do, care about us doing it. It's they're more worried about foreign countries doing it than they right. are their own citizens. But at the same time, if you are like take the aliens out of it, say yeah. it's just experimental aircraft. We have Google Earth, right? Mm-hmm. There's even other private. There's private Google Earth that you can subscribe to. You can yeah. get real time satellite images. Yeah. Yeah. We use one at work to um, measure roofs. Totally. Totally. It's called Skyview. Okay. Right. Right. So 
maybe, maybe. This episode brought to you by Skyview. <laughs> right, exactly. Maybe they developed some kind of like sleight of hand to like. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's why I, I pictured things. some Pride. ring of poles that that you wouldn't even need to like hang a tarp. It would just like transmit an image to the satellite that was false. Well, have you seen like the invisible suits? So the invisible suits, and this is actually super simple. I've seen this shield. I haven't seen it. Okay, so the invisible suit, if you stand completely straight against mm-hmm. somebody, you're invisible. It has like super high resolution video on one side. I got you, yeah. So yeah, it's, I do it's remember ba- seeing that. It yeah. has like a camera behind you, right? Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> right? All you're doing is showing them a picture image. And yeah, you would notice it if you're moving. Now there's but a guy like, that developed a shield like it's like a, a like a big panel and it's curved in such a way and it's made out of a special kind of glass that when you, it reflects the images around you and it blurs you out it, like you can literally hide behind it and then jump up and you appear out of like nowhere. Yeah, that and makes it's, sense. It's pretty cool and it's it and it doesn't he didn't it doesn't need cameras or anything. It's 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 kind of crazy. You can go look that up on YouTube. It's it's pretty neat. So like even very simple technology that's been around for a long time, green screen. Mhm. The reason nobody ever wears green on TV, yeah, is because at some point when you're like a newscaster or sports announcer, you're in front of a green screen. Right. You know, when the guys are, like, announcing a baseball game, they're not always in the booth. Right. Sometimes there's, like, a hot dog stand behind them. But, like, they put, like, a green screen back there. Sure. That's why they never wear green. Yeah, well, I when I was in, um, when I was back in the day when I was doing art, um, when I was in college, they, they we used non-photographic blue, which is, like, a baby blue. Right. And in printing, it didn't show up. You could like right. mark stuff and and write on it, and sure. Make corrections and stuff like that, and it and you couldn't see the markings. Well, like you know, and um, you know, when you're on TV, they always say like green is like the worst color because like mm-hmm. you get bled out. And yep. so the guy that we make movies with, he he bought a green screen. He's like, we're gonna try this. We're gonna try to shoot the whole thing on green screen and whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, we did it, and I was seeing it real time. How even if you, it doesn't matter what color green, which is weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> but like, it doesn't matter what color green. To some extent, you're like invisible. Yeah. You're just arms and a head. You know what I mean? So like, maybe it's just something simple like that that they don't want people to know where they're going or you know where they turn or whatever. Right. Um. But I think probably. You know, there needs to be a place that they have to test this stuff, and where else are you going to do it in the middle of nowhere? Yeah. Now, another thing that John Lear said, spoke about was that when he he was mentioning multiple aliens, and he talked about that, um, he went back to Roswell and said that there were well, was there was four bodies recovered that were bodies and they were autopsy but there was um a couple others that were like three other aliens that were alive that they they captured well this is that alien bob now what they're saying is now there was a talk that the two spaceships collided i've heard that too and that one crew was the three they found that were dead was the Roswell crash. And they didn't find the other one until way later because it was out in the middle of nowhere. And the... Um, so we're going to do we're gonna do an episode about the Whites. And I'll give the you... The Wild and Wonderful Whites of West Virginia? God, I wish. <laughs> God, I wish I loved it. That's one of my favorite <laughs> movies ever. Yeah. Sue Bob White. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what that is? That's the mate call Brown County. 
<laughs> rattle in a fucking pill bottle. <laughs> Got Percocets. That's such a good movie. Oh, that's great. Um, but no, the the whites. They're called, they're the Nordic aliens. Right. They got blonde hair and blue eyes. So they're more, they're more comfortable in a, in a warmer environment and they live in the desert. And there was this guy. Do you think maybe Hitler was an alien or wanted to? Well, we can do that one too. <laughs> yes. He's obsessed with the blonde hair and the blue eyes, right? They call it, they're, they're Nordics. That's what they're calling. And they're tall. Mm hmm. But they're super violent if they're threatened. Otherwise, huh. they're really peaceful. And this guy, it's called Walking Amongst the Whites. Hmm. And he was put out, and we'll 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 do a whole thing on this, but he was basically on like army duty. And he was like special forces. And he had to deal with them. So maybe, maybe. This is like a place where, like, you know, the government, and this might be why we spend so much money. Because I always say, like, our country is so giant. Mm -hmm. I was just talking about this the other day. Like, I've driven out west a couple times. And one time, I had enough money I had I didn't have to go to work. I had enough money. I had worked my I had worked a lot. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had saved up and I took like 2 weeks to go out there. Yeah. And so I just I took no map. Zero like zero is <laughs> before cell phones, no GPS. And I just went west and north. And then I figured when I got somewhere in like Utah or Colorado, I would start going south and west, right? Yeah. And I would just, I would drive for about six hours and I would stop and I had like a budget, like 50 bucks and I would get like a, you know, like a red roof in or something like that. And I'd get a party in some weird town. There's so many towns that aren't on the map that you've never heard of in the middle of nowhere. Right. And one thing that our country offers more so than any other country is the vast difference in climates. Yeah. There's so many different climates really in a really close proximity. Sure. And I don't really know where else you can get that. No, like, it's, I, it's, it's not all the other places end up being in another country and they call it a different climate. Right. Like there is, okay, there's a, de- like in Hawaii, there's a desert. Mm-hmm. You can, you can snowboard. You can surf. Yeah. All, all in the big island. Yeah. Okay. But you can also drive around the whole island. Yeah. In, in like less than a day. Yeah. Like we drove through it, and the art the army has a base on the Big Island. They have a base right in the middle, and they do. It looks like Nevada. Mm-hmm. It, it looks just like Nevada, for whatever reason. In this particular area, there's not a whole lot of rain. It's just the way the weather patterns go, and whatever. There's not a whole lot of rain. It's kind of deserty. There's I don't know, not really cactus, but like. You know that kind of plant, like a lot of sage. yeah, yeah. They got a yeah. It's a, uh, you know, I, what was that? Property hunters or whatever, where they got yeah. ridiculous <laughs> budgets and they don't have the jobs to match it. And <laughs> right. Like, we want, yeah. I want to watch them drive them around to all uh, the different places in Hawaii, and they were like, "This is more like a desert region, and there's a lot more bugs." And, <laughs> But then also there's parts of like the Big Island you can see up on the mountain there's snow. Yeah. And they're like, well, they don't, there's no like it's not enough to have a ski resort. They're like, but there's like clubs that take like all terrain vehicles and fucking they go up there and they go they tow people up and they snowboard and shit and then they come down and surf. But like my point is, is with this is you have a giant region mm-hmm. 
of like snow where it's year round in July there's snow you have a giant region that's a desert year round there's zero (laughs) rainfall you have a giant region that's like you know forest thick not quite rainforest but like like Oregon Montana Northern California you know I right. mean, it's, and then you have tropical in the south. And then you have, like, you know, more like European weather in the northeast. So there's a lot of different areas. So, like, if you were an alien and you were coming to a place and you needed a specific climate, it seems like the United States is one of the places you probably would go. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, well, you, or you just go to Cincinnati and you get. Right. Get all the weather. <laughs> right. Within one day. Mm. That's a Cat Williams. Mm-hmm. He's like a pimp doesn't know what to wear. Right. Got rain boots <laughs> on, shorts, <laughs> his a fur Tim- coat. And a Tim- his, my Timberlands. Yeah. <laughs> I stepped out in my bathing suit, my Timberlands, and a fur coat. <laughs> right. Well, there's, there's snow on the equator. Yeah. In the highlands, in, in Ecuador, in the highlands, I've been to Ecuador a bunch. In the highlands, which is the, they call the mountains, basically. Yeah, it's cold. Yeah, and well, Mount it's, Kilimanjaro and Tanzania's got snow on top of it. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's cold. It snows and it's cold. Mm-hmm. Well, the Andes, you know. Well, it's funny. If you go actually look at, like, photos of, like, Kilimanjaro, you can find where they got, like, Elephants walking across an arid plain, and in the background, you can see Kilimanjaro with snow on top. Yeah, that is crazy. So, uh, so I mean, I guess it's like, is this a place where you would do something like that? Yeah, totally. Is it a place where you would, you know, maybe have technology? Uh, yeah. Where else are you gonna do it? Yeah. Especially if you if if John Lear's right and they got underground facilities, who knows what's going on then? Because maybe it is like that. Maybe um, maybe the car- compartmentalization part is that any like live aliens get sent to Area Fifty Two's underground facility via yeah. train. And we're gonna we're gonna do a Dolce one. Like that's coming up. A Dolce one is coming up, but like to me, this this like I knew about the Dugway Proving Grounds. I knew that there were. Um, I had heard that before, like that. Just that there is a Dugway Proving Grounds. I'd heard that before, mm-hmm. um, but then when I got into you know like researching it, yeah, there's there's tons of stuff that's been developed, and where else is it developed? And then you get into like the Nevada Triangle. You know, from a practical standpoint, yeah, there, it, there's no doubt in my mind that it exists and that's what they're testing there. But, like, also from an alien standpoint, where else would you keep aliens? <laughs> so, right. Are you eating your kids' Halloween candy right now? Whoppers. <laughs> 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 Dude, by the way, they made out. Yeah, like mine did too. Like the only good thing that's come out of a giant subdivision that's mowed its way through up the right. road there, it's where are you gonna go, they, man? Is that they got candy coming out their wazoo? <laughs> where Where are you going from here? Yeah, <laughs> seriously, where are you moving? Nowhere. I, I bet they're invading your space. They are. <laughs> but, like, there were so many people here that were, like... Because last year, they didn't have trick-or-treaters a lot. They gave... You know how they do, like, fun-sized candy bars? Yeah. They gave them a whole sleeve. Jeez, old Pete's. And I'm like, oh, man, thank you. They're like, we're so glad to see trick-or-treaters. I love the little kids when they dress up and blah, blah, blah. And then that's, my son, he's all, he's all like, you know, timid at first. And then we went to like two houses and he like was hiding behind me. 
I'm like, hey man, bring your pumpkin up here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, back in my day, when we were, we, my mom used to drive us around in the van right. mm-hmm. around our, where I out where I live, where there's like right. thousands are few and far between, and you had to drive all the way down their driveway just to get to the house. And half the time you would go up, like half the houses just had that bowl with a please take one sign in it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> well, he was like. He's like, oh, he likes M Ms. And then the third house, they're like, you want some M Ms? He's like, what do you what do you mean? Like I saw it click in his head. <laughs> they're like, well, it's Halloween. They just say trick or treat. And he's like, trick or treat. <laughs> like what he got, bitch? <laughs> right? What you got in there? What you got and on they, the forty? The guy took a dude, like a softball handful. Yeah. Of like fun size M Ms. Yeah. Into his pumpkin. He's like, "That's it. <laughs> That's it." See you he's, more. he's like, "Happy Halloween." Starts patting <laughs> him down. <laughs> right. And then he was on. He's like, "Happy Halloween, chicken yeah. street dog." <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not shy at all. Um. All right. Well, let's get into what we think. All right, I want to hear yours second. Okay. So, I think there's aliens there, and I'm going to say why. (laughs) All right, so, the reports of the explosions, Mm -hmm. so they outlawed underground testing a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But, but... I don't know if that fits into practical use for nuclear weapons. Now, every country that has nuclear weapons Mm -hmm. has tried some kind of practical application for nuclear weapons. Yeah, like a real world scenario. Right, like the Russians, there's, there's an atomic lake in Russia. They were trying to figure out if they could dig a lake or make a dam. And what they did was they they had a river that was running a certain way. And they detonated a nuclear weapon where it would run off into it. Mm-hmm. And it worked. Except... If you swim there, you get cancer and you die. (laughs) Other than that, it totally created a lake. (laughs) Um, You can take a picture of it really far away. (laughs) But Elon Musk has that drilling company. Do you know about him? He's the best. Yeah. um, yeah. So he has, he has, he doesn't know Elon Musk by now. Yeah. But do you know all about him? Yeah. He has the drilling company. Do you know about that? Mm-hmm. It's called the Boring Company. Yeah. <laughs> He's great. That's what makes him a great troll. That's what makes him a great troll, right? So, um, yeah. So, so he had he has the Boring Company, but that costs a lot. That costs a ton of money. Mm-hmm. And now that we kind of have, you know, the nuclear process down. And what you're really trying to do is make a cavern. And if you're trying to make a giant underground base, it seems like you that's what you would do. You would you need do you use dynamite anyway? Do you, you ever played Minecraft? I've kids? not. I, okay. No, they're not that they're not that they're, they're not there. Okay, yet. well, when you want to make a big hole, you climb underneath the ground and you plant TNT. And then you blow it all up. Well, I mean, that's what that's what they do. Mm-hmm. And up until, like, I mean, mo- every mine up until lately, it's dynamite based. Yeah, it's blasted open. Yeah, and they they go in and they have dynamite shafts and 
you know, you drill it, you put it in there. Yep. Even like quarries and, you know, that's what dynamite literally is for. Yep. So, I guess what I'm saying is, if it was going to be anywhere and you needed to create an environment for some sort of extraterrestrial that needs to live in a cool climate. You can't exactly ship them to Alaska and make them live with the Inuits. You probably have. You Put probably them in have that black pyramid. You could. You could. <laughs> they don't already live there. Yeah. It's already booked up. <laughs> right. But like you probably have to create a space for them. Okay. If it's not alien and you're going to have test flights and you're going to have ultra super secret aircraft, okay, what else makes more sense than having an underground runway? Yeah. It seems like that, even if that's trillion dollar technology, that gives you such a head start on everybody else. Yeah. That you would do that. So. I also think that when you get high up in military technology, mm-hmm. it gets exponentially fucked up. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's literally proof that they've tried to create a gay bomb with LSD. <laughs> <laughs> there's literally proof of that. Peg. <laughs> Like the Unabomber. I don't know why that makes me laugh. Right, right. Well, they did it. <coughs> right, it didn't work, of course. <laughs> Thank God. And anyway, anyway, gay dudes are kind of angry. Tragic as shit. Gay dudes are kind of angry. So, like, you don't want any part of that. That, that backfire. Right. Talk about the ultimate backfire. Yeah. <laughs> you got a bunch of organized dudes that are pissed off. Yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> but, like, but, like, MK Ultra is a very real thing that yeah. <laughs> did yeah. happen and they just gave acid to people yep so me and you me and you know a guy that was a teacher and a kid put acid in his coffee mm-hmm. and he had never done acid before yeah and he told me he said anthony i thought i was losing my mind and he's like I, I went to the principal and i said something is wrong i'm going crazy mm-hmm. And they, you know, they get, they did a talk screen on them and they couldn't find anything. And they're finally like, you know, trying to whittle it down of what, what was going on. And it was only because like somebody talked to like, oh, you have acid in your coffee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, Cause it's really hard to test for certain kinds of acid. Mm-hmm. And that kid got like serious in serious trouble for it. And this guy that we know, he had to ride them out. And they did that to people. And mm-hmm. so one of the people they did that to was the Unibomber. It happened at Vogue, too. Who? It happened at Vocational, too. Really? Yeah. They they had, uh, they did it in some, some brownies he brought in or something. You like know that. what, man? That's, uh, you're not ready for that. No, he he was wearing sunglasses in school. He thought something was wrong with his eyes. You're just you're not ready for that. You can't Mm-mm. take that on. No. You can't be blindsided by that. But like <laughs> the Unibomber, Ted Kaczynski, he was a brilliant. And he got he went to Harvard before he even was supposed to graduate high school. Mm-hmm. And he was part of this program. Because he was like gifted, and he was considered like like um, like a strong brain, basically, like somebody that they could run tests on, right? So they they what they did was they gave him acid, and they basically insulted him for like an hour. <laughs> yeah, but if you think about that, <laughs> that <laughs> does to you, right? Mm. He ended up killing people in the mail. Like, yeah, it's weird, right? right? He went from being an intellectual. Who'd have saw that coming? <laughs> well, right. So, 
when it comes to like what the government would do to like prove what they can what they are capable of and what they can do yeah man that's what they fucking do so they go out to the to middle kind of nowhere put in uh put a little to go with what you're saying um I did see in, in part of that John Lear interview he did where he said that the aliens that were alive that they had there was one that actually lived out the rest of his life with some colonel right. somewhere right and died in like 52 or something right. like that but there right. was there's ones that are like alive right now and all this stuff well one of the things that he said was that they built these magnetic fields because they were so advanced that they could move with their mind. Right. They could blink in and out and, and appear and reappear, which I thought right then when he said that, because this was an older interview, I thought it was pretty interesting given that in the Zimbabwe episode we did, right. those aliens seemed to just kind of appear. They, the kids said they, they didn't like right. walk out of the door. They just all of a sudden they were there. Right. And it's like, oh, well, that, that kind of correlates there. So if you were going to have this magnetic field facility, you, you would think that you would put it underground where the magnetism would be stronger. And yeah. You could generate from the Earth's natural magnetism even maybe. On some Agreed. Level. I agree. And I think like you you have to have like a place. So there's, there's a movie with Ewan McGregor and Sarah Johansson and, or uh, Scarlett Johansson. And they're, um, yeah, yeah, they're, they're clones. The, the clones. Yeah. Right. So they're in the middle of the desert. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do something like that, you're going to do some experimental shit. You need to be out in the middle of nowhere. Right. And that's why we have a uranium processing plant by where we grew up. Yeah. It's, it's and, in the middle. Of and nowhere. if you don't want to be seen on satellite, you, you put it underground. Agreed. And I hope that zipper technology is true. But yeah, man, I think like, I think that's, I think that's, that's what's going on. And if it's not extraterrestrial alien or whatever, because uh, a lot of people think like, there's aliens that are like us in the future. Mm -hmm. And then there's like extraterrestrials that are actually from like other worlds. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like an interdimensional thing. That's a lot. I've come across that a lot with researching this. So, I mean, if you're going to do that in the middle of Nevada is where you do it. And if you're going to test like new aircrafts with new technology that you get from those aliens, yeah, you do it out there. Yep. And if you're going to have underground trains that go to Vegas, nobody's checking <laughs> if, you're, if you're blowing up tunnels. And right. so, yeah, I kind of think that's that's plausible. That's that's what they do out there. And then you have like, you know, just like we just did Dugway Proving Grounds High School. There is there's like this camp. There's like this town and so many people live there. And then there's a Church of Latter-day Saints. And then if you go to where you were talking about, it's like the the satellite picks up and it moves way over. Yeah. And it's a whole different part of the base, like a whole state away. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's that's what's going on out there. Yeah, and supposedly that uh, the area where the uh, airport is is that that's where the um, where I where. John Lear was saying that the uh, hole was blasted somewhere in that that area. Now, I don't. There, know. So is that? So your opinion is, is yeah, that they're housing aliens, possibly. And uh, it's possibly. everything that Area Fifty One is. Aliens, yeah. area. It's aliens, alien aircraft, experimental aircraft, chemical warfare. It's like all that everything that's like it's like uh everything black ops everything that like they don't want people to know that seems like the perfect place it's part of the nevada triangle yeah i mean where else would you do it you got a lot of different climates in one place and yeah, yeah they also seems... were testing uh dirty bombs there i heard right 
<clears throat> to see their effect and how they. And work. the thing with John Lear, you know, John Lear, you know, a lot of people say he's a quack. Guy has like a crazy amount of flight hours. Yeah, he's he's uh, very highly decorated. There's like very few pilots that have as many flight hours as he has. Yeah. Even like commercial pilots that don't take vacation, like don't, yeah. don't have what he he's got. Like it's something crazy. It's like a hundred thousand hours of, of flight and test aircrafts and whatever. And yeah, his dad did develop the Learjet, but like also like you know he's like kind of on the forefront. People think he's like a quack and whatever, but like you know he's been saying this for a very long time. And like mm-hmm. I get it. like what's he got the game? He already has Lear money. Mm-hmm. There's not if you're gonna compare Lear money to UFO money, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not the same. Yeah, it just isn't the same. <laughs> so I think it's possible. I think that there is some kind of test site going on out there and then you know if take the extraterrestrial part out of it definitely experimental aircraft but well the thing know. with John Lear too that he has behind him is uh, to an extent is John Na- or is George Knapp who's very credible and he's interviewed him a couple right. times and, and talked with him several times throughout the years and he's one that if he doesn't 100% believe what's going on, he doesn't, it won't buy into it. He won't. Right. And he was 100% into Bob Lazar. And, and I know he's interviewed John Lear several times. So I think that, I think that speaks, you know. And you know, as soon as I saw the Space Force, I'm like, yeah, that's real. <laughs> like, when he's driving, they're like, where is it? And the mountain is up. I'm yeah. like, yeah, that's real. Yeah, we got stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah, that that is for sure a thing. That's for yeah. sure a thing. And if you drive out there, you know, it's it's Wiley Coyote, man. There's nothing there. <laughs> there really is nothing out there. It's yeah. just you're out in the middle of nowhere. According and... to uh, that great documentary I watched, Wiley Coyote is out there. <laughs> he did catch the red one and he's one not gonna help you <laughs> he's not gonna help you alright what do you think okay so I mean I think at face value it is what it is it's 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 a test facility and so far they've pretty much disclosed everything that they've done there um, as far as military testing goes and stuff but I do think that there is a definite, definite possibility that there's stuff going. I mean, if they kept that that constant peg operation (laughs) quiet with a name like that. Is that your favorite thing? It's the fucking most ridiculous name for an operation (laughs) I've ever heard in my life. (laughs) But they, I think... I think if you got, kept that quiet, you know, it was even, they even talked to, uh, George Knapp talked to Colonel Gail Peck and he said, cause he, he, he kept it quiet. You know, he had no leaks even up to 19 years after the operation had ceased. And he asked him if it was possible, some of the things that John Lear was saying that there was an underground facility and that they were possibly holding live aliens and stuff like that and he said he said no i don't think it's possible and i'm like you just asked the most tight-lipped guy in the world right <laughs> and but but what i thought was pretty cool was that after he after he said that he said but if you were gonna do something like that that's the perfect facility for it yeah and it was like okay all right, all right. So that I, I think more than anything else I l- looked at or listened to, that little teeny soundbite right there told me something's going on. Yeah. Just that little bit that he did right there was like, hey, wait a minute here. 
you know you got this yeah. guy that, that didn't leak anything right you know didn't let any of his people leak anything and he alluded to the fact like I don't know if he was just being matter of fact but it sounded like wink wink nod nod right so yeah I, I I'm ten, I'm inclined to believe that there is definitely something going on there um I don't know if it's a uh, underground facility that was built like John Lear saying, because I don't even know what a clean nuke is. I didn't even know that was a thing. I guess it's something that doesn't have fallout. Yeah. I just don't understand how that doesn't I don't happen. either. I don't either because we are from a place. Right, so I don't. I, don't, I keep. Saying I understand it. that. Maybe it's it's it could it's it's very easy that it's something I don't understand. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. So, but that but, uh, uh, so I guess what my my belief is is that there's something going on there, and it's most likely underground where the real deal is. What it is, I have no clue. It could right. just be more top secret aviation shit. Probably. But, or missile testing or anything like that, but but there's definitely something else going on there. All right, so you're you're saying that definitely secretive, possibly aliens, possibly, yep, mm-hmm. yeah, and like I said, I think it would be funneled down. Um, stuff from Area 51 and S4 where they learn things from whatever Bob Lazar types were doing. Right. And then they'd figure out a practical way to apply it and then they would send it that to Area 52 and then they would develop the tech from there. So that way the two aren't mixing with each other. They don't, the, the tech being developed isn't under the guise that you're re-engineering alien tech to them it's it's a it's american made stuff you know okay. what i mean so that's the that's way you fine. compartmentalize it that's fine but like okay let's uh, let's take our podcast mm-hmm. all right i'm not a sound engineer right right I, i'm not i'm but i i have produced movies i've always hired people so when you're a producer, you take it from concept to reality. So I've hired people to do editing and sound, right? right. I've done a little bit of editing. I know a little bit about sound. Um, but when we did the podcast, like I took that role on, I had to like go to Google. Mm-hmm. You do the, you do the scientific um, process, right? Yeah. You, you find out, how do I do this? If somebody sneezes, if somebody's, you know, talking in the background, how do I pull, you know, all that stuff. How do you pull all that out, right? Yeah. And then they show you in tutorials. How do you, okay. There's no tutorial about a spaceship that flies on an antimatter <laughs> reactor. You know what I mean? Right. So... <laughs> There's no gather of information, which is the first step, is to gather all the information that's out there. Mm-hmm. That doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. What do you do? You have to send people like Bob Lazar that you mm-hmm. can destroy, yeah. that are smart enough to deal with it, and will do it, you yeah. know? And people like John Lear, you can call it Quack, if he <laughs> talks shit. Yeah. And I don't know, man. You send them out there. You send them out to the desert mm-hmm. to work on stuff. So, you know, I think I think we're both in the... At the very least, it's like ultra secretive. Super aviation, high tech. Super high tech aviation and super dangerous chemical and biological weapons. Yeah. And maybe on the... On the far side, it's Alien oh, Tech too. I love far side comics. I do too. Midvale School for the Gifted. <laughs> yeah. 
How <laughs> dinosaurs really became extinct? Yeah, they're all fucking, smoking. They're all smoking beyond fucking school. <laughs> uh, all right, so it's probable. Probable. I'm with it. All right, I'm Anthony. I'm Brandon. And this is everything that's weird. <laughs>